my whole thing is right it's like i believe that you know if uh application to you have to you have to first examine yourself you have to look at yourself and then when it's like okay so after after i'm like let's say if you're a trapper and you made all the money right what are you gonna do you're still gonna trap and risk all that you risk all that you know all that time and effort you know it's like if, if there's not a goal if there's not if there's not a seek to end it right if there's not a if there's not a if not if there's not a um life to if, if there's not a like even if you are doing it you have to be in service of to end it but also to see the better version of yourself This podcast is proudly supported by the Ōtara Network Action Committee, ONAC, community-owned, community-driven, and community-led. All right, kia ora. Today we have Danielle Tua, and I'm speaking with... Gabriel, kia ora, everybody. Um, what brought you to New Zealand? Um, I'm so excited to be here. I'm here for a month. I come uh, from New York. Um, I'm here for a program. AFS. Um, well, I come from the city and I, I feel like, you know, things got pretty redundant at home. Like I was just doing the same things. I wasn't really, um, I, I really wanted to like try something new. I wanted to try and differentiate um, my life. And I also wanted to come to a new country and see the culture. I mean, it's a beautiful thing you have going here. It's a great organization and everything. Proud to be here. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, we do try to keep um, our space open to everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, so since you've been here, I know it's been less than 24 hours. Yeah. Um, what, um, what do you think? think you can what's what are some goals you're planning on achieving while being here well some um personal goals in myself i mean i just want to enrich myself with all the culture and the food and um like i love the i love the lifestyle of just what y'all i love new like new zealand just it's just really a beautiful place even driving here so i mean like i was saying before like I just want to enrich myself with all the, you know, the level of culture, the food, the music. I mean, everything is like uh, just driving around. It's really nice. I love the, I like, you know, I was in Auckland. It was beautiful here. I mean, it's like great just to kind of be in a new place. I really hope like genuinely to like learn stuff about myself too that maybe i don't know and that's the whole fun of it you know when you go to different countries like this you learn parts of yourself and you see things that you don't really get to see all the time and so being here and all this stuff i get to see different parts of me and that's and that's really why i do it and that's why anyone if anyone ever wants to go out and venture and see different parts of the world or see different parts of themselves you know the service that you should be doing when it comes down to how you interact with the world around you, you should be um, servicing um, uh, yourself as and you should find things that maybe put you out of your comfort zone, you should find things that challenge you, you should find things that, you know, you have fun with, you should find things that make you laugh, you know, you should find things that um, make you realize that you are bigger than what you actually are. And, you know, so when coming to New Zealand, that's mainly a real goal that I have. Yeah. Wow. And what a powerful statement. Thank um, you. Thank you. I think a lot of our youth and young ones can relate. Mm-hmm. Um, say most of them haven't been out of New Zealand mm-hmm. or even, um, for the ones far north and deep south, they haven't actually seen a nightclub or, a, mm. you know, just simple things that we have regular mm-hmm. for um, us in Auckland. Um, so for those of you that don't know Gabe and um, even myself, what was life like for you back in um, America? Yes. And what state were you um, residing in? Because I know for us New Zealanders, especially Otara here, we um, 
we love Americans. Um, we love their culture. We love their music, mm-hmm. um, and we love their freedom that yeah. they that they get yeah. over there. So, what are some things that life was like for you back um, back so, home? and what is where is home for you? So, home is in Brooklyn for me. I'm from New York. Um, I'm from Brooklyn, Big BK. All right, no. Um, um, you know, uh, we out here, anybody, anybody from BK knows, you know, there's like a, there, when, when a other, when you see someone else from your hometown or Brooklyn or, you know, anyone, when you see someone from your hometown, you're like, yo, yo, what's up, yo. So, you know, I love that part about Brooklyn. Cause like, I just see like homies randomly in, you know, different parts of the world. Um, I was in Japan, I was talking to someone from Brooklyn, I was like, yo, this is really cool, and, you know, definitely in the, you know, uh, the liberties that we have in the city, um, especially with the different cultures, I mean, a lot of it, I love, um, cultures that, you know, it's so diverse, you know, you can take the train, and look, any kid from New York can from any neighborhood can take the train and go to a spot that might blow their minds when it comes to what they originally thought was, you know, possible. Like, it's all, like, my home is where the heart of the city is, where I come from, I, I, um, I was born in the, in the NYU hospital in Manhattan. Um, I come from, um, I come from Brooklyn. Now I live in a very nice part of Brooklyn. Um, I, um, and we've lived there for a while now. Um, I was born in Crown Heights in Flatbush. All of of y'all BK homies know exactly where that is. Um, But it was just so like, I live in a predominantly white area in Brooklyn. Um, Park Slope, it's where the Nets play. Any, if any, if any of y'all Brooklyn like Nets. the Nets, the Brooklyn yeah, Nets, yeah. all this stuff, it's um, the stadium is in that vicinity. We got um, a lot of stuff. Like the the Atlantic Mall is the, the biggest mall. Um, you know, uh, every every single New York kid used to get into fights at that mall. Um, every single um, then we have the uh, Chick Fil A across the street from. Now this Chick Fil A is like hell because every single kid, person, I don't know, people like people in New York, they all love to flock that Chick Fil A. But and even that energy of the city, I love. I love that energy. You know, it's great. Seriously. Yeah. Oh wow! What an amazing um, story to hear. I think it sounds exactly like us here back home. We have a we call it the hood. Yeah. Um, here in Otara, and we have a slogan. It's called the home of the brave. Yeah. Do you have something similar for your hometown? Um, uh, the home of the gentrification smoothies. The oh. home of. No, no, like, like. Do we even have a slogan in <laughs> Brooklyn? I don't know. Like, and like, you know, like there's so many people who represent us. Um, the 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 hoods in BK are like Flatbush, um, Crown Heights, um, Brownsville is one of the worst neighborhoods in all of America. Um, I've um, you know, I, in my past relationships, I've known like a bunch of people from different places all around the city, the Bronx as well, the Queens and all these different places. And, um, you just really come to love, like, um, anyone knows in Brooklyn that the best Chinese food is always in the hoods. You get the best Chinese, I don't know what they do. They put some magic flavoring. The best Chinese food is there. Not where I live um, at all, except we have good uh, crepes. I don't know. <laughs> we have like, um, and uh, I, I order a lot from, um, uh, I get, I get, you know, I like Mickey D's, McDonald's. I like TB, Taco Bell. I like, um, I like, and 
just the innate like cultural foods. Like I love Jamaican food. I love Mexican food. I love Colombian food. I love Puerto Rican food. I mean, I'm Puerto Rican myself. So, you know, just being in those cultures, having that food, it's so awesome. It really is, but yeah. Wow. I, oh, so speaking, we'll come back and hit that food topic. Um, here in Otara, we have a lot of, um, we're known for our fried chicken and our bakeries. Awesome. Um, so. I love both things. Yeah, it'll be yeah. nice. And there's a lot of Polynesian um, places here that do Polynesian food. Um, mm -hmm. There's Evelina's, shout out to Evelina. Um, she's um, got a very big store, it's nice and cheap. All the Polynesians show up there on Sundays. Tell them to hook me up. I would, I would love to get some Polynesian food. Oh, we will hook you up. <laughs> we will take you. Um, Saturday, we have like a Otara market mm -hmm. where all the um, you know private vendors, little small business owners, come sell their vegetables and oh. all their merchandise and mm -hmm. food. There's one aisle just dedicated to food. Um, yeah. Steak and egg mushroom rolls is our favourite. I'll um, take it. That, that's the hit for Otara. Yeah. Um, raw fish and um, raw seafood is yeah. what we Salmon. love here. Yeah. Salmon, not so much. You we, see, um, it's propaganda because when I went on the plane, it was like salmon is the best. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's I all think propaganda. Maybe for the plane, it's, um, <laughs> you know, that's a more predominant way up yeah. you know what I mean? So <laughs> yeah, if we have come back to the hood, we don't eat uh, salmon, we don't even know where to find a salmon. If anything, <laughs> we're gonna eat an eel from the creek yeah. or a pie from the dairy, which back in our day used to be a dollar twenty. Yeah. Now it's gone to two fifty. I don't know who we talked to about that. The uh, prices of pies. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, uh, like the price of a hot dog and Depends where you go. Now, it's cheap in a bunch of places. It can be two dollars, three dollars for maybe like three hot dogs. Yeah. Um, in Times Square, you you pay an eight dollars for one hot dog, so that's insane. Um, we have a bunch of price and like the fare is a big thing. The public transportation, uh, New York City, the subway, it's two seventy five, and they increased it to two ninety. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's <laughs> it's just ridiculous the cost of living here in America by the sounds of it. So, um, here in our space, we like to um, encourage our young ones to plant their own food, um, awesome. get out and learn about all these things. Come in and do podcasts just like this. Um, skill them up. Mm. This is what we like to do here. Yeah, in this, I, I need to skill myself. Like I need skills. I don't know how to plant. Yeah, well, like I tried planting, it was the most miserable, pathetic <laughs> thing that I think someone has ever done with seeds. So like, I used to think that planting, like I tried planting strawberries, I tried planting tomatoes, I spent three months on this, and somehow each time I messed up. So I low-key need those skills as well, but yeah. Yeah, well, we've got plenty of um, even youth here that you can hang out with and they can mm -hmm. take you around. Um, yeah. I think strawberries and tomatoes is a really... Oh, strawberries itself is a hard plant to grow. Um, yeah, you should, you should have told me to, that years ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, we learn. We, li we live and learn, eh? And that's, that's how we've ended up here in this room today. Mm. Um, so can you tell us a story about uh, maybe a scary moment that you've had in America or that you've all right y'all maybe not yourself um, any any uh any city kid knows crackheads galore um so in speaking of socioeconomic problems in our city one big socioeconomic problem in our city is the homeless issue um mm -hmm. we shelters no, uh, homeless people don't really go into shelters a lot. Shelters are not um, um, properly funded. Also, the organization of some shelters can be really dangerous, really scary. I've heard horror stories. I've heard uh, people get assaulted all the time in shelters. It happens most in shelters, actually. Um, and so we have an issue with that. And um, because of that, because of the fact that no one wants to go to shelters, because, like... You know, when you're a when you're a crackhead in New York, you don't want to go to a shelter and go to rehab and do anything like that. What you want to do is you want to stay in the subway and you want to mess around. So in the subway, we have a big issue right now, where there's a lot of um, there's a lot of it's really sad. There's like sometimes like I know like five of them on my train by name. Um, I pay I pay like a bunch of them, but um uh. There was one, um, one of the dudes who I knew, I mean, I had some trouble just even getting to the airport in New Zealand because 
um, I was on the bus and a crackhead pulled up on the bus. It, like just ran walking weird wonky. I'm like, don't start. It's it's early. Don't start with me. And um, we he starts yelling at the top of his lungs, throwing rock. I don't know how he got rocks. I like I really do not know. But he threw rocks at this person. It was like. I was like, am I in a video game? And I, do I have to, like, be, like, a superhero and be like, stop, stop, no, because, and then I, and then I was like, okay, so that's why I don't usually take, you know, the bus to um, the airport. Okay, and uh, then, um, in the, another subway experience, so at 6 a.m., on the subway, I was in high school. I used to have to travel an hour to high school. I was on the two train, any of y'all know, Bergen Street. Uh, I was on a two train and this, at 6 a.m., there's a guy just like, no, actually a lady, just like, <laughs> like so yeah, just like, full, uh, just, I'm not gonna curse, full on defecating on in the, in the subway, just like shit. Oh, <laughs> but you know what I mean? <laughs> like, just, at like, in the middle of the platform in front of everybody wow. it's 6 a.m i don't i don't want to start with this i'm it's every day um i've seen i've seen i've seen a person actually get um uh hit by a train and like he like i feel like one like every new yorker at least is going to probably see that once wow. um because that's a that's a whole thing there um i've seen kids like get hit by buses i've seen uh you know it's what a lifestyle eh? so not only do we have you know um places that we can't visit um in america like a train you know they can't even catch the train to go to um uh, an important place like an airport to go and explore explore the world um it's, we have similar experiences like for us some shops we can't go to because people are drinking outside and they're just mm. afraid to walk past yeah um and that's just sad that these things are happening around the world. Yeah, I got one on my corner. His name is Bruce. He's a cool guy. Um, Bruce does sometimes go crazy a little bit, and then I had to, like, distance myself from him. Like, it's, like, really a love-hate relationship with this dude. I'm going to be honest. Like, this dude has me, like, tripping every time I, like, like, I give him a dollar. <laughs> Comes back, I give him a dollar. Like, I give him so, I give him... Dude, I give him a salary. He's like, I give him a job basically. And then like, um, you know, like, um, uh, like he spends it on, yo, one time he actually, this surprised me. This, this surprised me. One time, um, Bruce got like, like a, a filet mignon takeout. I was like, Bruce, you spending all my money on fancy ass food. <laughs> like you could you could easily go to, you know, shelter, get yourself free food. You want a filet mignon. I'm like, yo, he didn't even buy a beer. I'm like, so, cause that's his go-to. And it's like, okay, so Bruce got taste now. But yeah, no, it, it like there's there's one of my there's one of my train. Um and uh, like my friend um, pays my friend pays um, one of them to save a seat for him. Pays him like ten dollars each time. Um, I got a seat one time. Ugh, I love that deal. I'm gonna be honest. Um, yeah, it's really good. Wow, <laughs> you have to reserve your seats. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh it's just that God. like you know when it's rush hour, um, uh, it, you know the seat is not always the you know nicest smelling seat after my you know reserved. Um, it, but you know it gets the job done. Um, I had to stay, like, I have an hour commute. I needed it when I was younger. Me and my, yeah. So he used to be hustling. That was his hustle. Yeah. They all have some weird hustles. I know a guy who um, just uh, draws stick figures. I knew a guy drew me on the train one time um, and he gave it to me. Um, I didn't have to pay for it. It was just like you a did? chill. Yeah, no, it was a sketch. Oh, wow. Um, he, Made my forehead a little bit big. Gonna be honest, there. It's like but the cartoon eyes. Ones. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, yo, my, like my forehead is not that gigantic. I look like Mega Mind <laughs> in the photo. It's whatever. It's whatever, though. I mean, you know, you have but to deal with it. That's how he was hustling um, to get what his work out there. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I yeah. mean, you know, th didn't even draw my hair like 
crooked a little bit. Yeah. Was insanely mad about it. Almost didn't pay for it. Um, <laughs> I didn't pay for it, thank God. But, you know, yeah. Well, now we know, Ōtara. Um, get drawing. <laughs> Go out there and draw some people. Make some money. And this yeah. is how they're doing it in America. Or, they're hustling. Uh, or sing. Yeah. Sing, or sing in the subway. Um, reserve sell, a seat. Yep. Sell <laughs> candy. Um, uh, you know, uh, what else do they do? Uh, because, you know, here, um, yeah. we've got a high stat for youth selling drugs, which was never a thing. Mm -hmm. I don't remember growing up in my days, it was all only in America. Mm -hmm. We heard that the children and the youth were selling um, drugs and mm -hmm. narcotics just to help their whanau. And we've got a high, high um, rate of them, even mm -hmm. here um, in our, just our little town centre ourselves. Mm -hmm. So what would your advice be to those young boys that are out here doing things like that? Do you have any advice for them? Um, uh, let me hear. Let me see. So some advice for, um, uh, I guess, all the Otara trappers is, um, look, it's like, uh, <laughs> look, really, <clears throat> well, there's two ways I like to put it. There is... There's no right or wrong There is, there is, there is, um... Um, you know, it's different, right? It's like, it's different because Cause you're there's also an yourself, instinct, right? yeah, there's also an instinct of survival as mm. well. And there's instincts of like, you need to get like when everyone around you is like, like you, it's just like, it's that mentality, you know, that's really the, you see everyone else making that money and you're like, you know what I mean? There, there's definitely a piece you want. And I think even if you're not trapping or even if you're not doing anything like that you know you can um it like meant there it's you know it's just genius like what some um like you know the amount of money in this just like it's a it's a whole business so my whole thing is right it's like i believe that you know if uh application to you have to you have to first examine yourself you have to look at yourself and then when it's like okay so after after i'm um, like let's say if you're a trapper and you made all the money right what are you gonna do you're still gonna trap and risk all that you risk all that you know all that time and effort you know it's like if, if there's not a goal if there's not if there's not a seek to end it right if there's not a if there's not a if not if there's not a um life to if if there's not a like even if you are doing it you have to be in service of to end it but also to see the better version of yourself because mm -hmm. there's oh because no matter what there's always a better version yeah. and the thing is that you're going like especially if you you know a lot you, you're either going to learn it the hard way or you're going to and you're going to learn it the easy way mm -hmm. but and especially in a lot of in a lot of cases i just like it's just you have to be doing like when you why is there a reason why if there's a like if you trap why is there a reason why you're not doing anything else that gets you with the same amount of money mm. is it education is it is it is it you don't mess with anything else like is it so my whole thing is right it's like um you need it you need to you need to you need to survive but you also it's like so after like once you're done surviving you know what's what's what else to do what do you when you when you when you trap and you get in money why uh, why do you need money why is that the best version to get the why is that the best way to get the money all these things but you know um like i i respect you know everybody who hustles everybody who um, puts in the time and work it's a fault of the system rather mm. and um there is opportunities in in methods that legal or not there's always opportunities that you will see a better version of yourself so even when you are doing things like that um you have to look at i what like what am i really doing this for mm. right and if i can and if i can like you know like I can clean this up within a month, two months, a year, whatever, right? What what do I have to do to clean it up? And then like like because you're automatically gonna have that mentality to keep working and working. 
and I mean that's what they do so you know yeah yeah so you heard it here first you guys um and that don't, that, don't that, take that my is, advice though I that mean. is the main reason to um well that's what i see too is that these kids are just trying to get themselves a meal and a warm blanket mm -hmm. you know what i mean and a warm house so um yeah and it's sad that i don't know all the answers and a little bit of advice from people like you who um you know from different parts of the world yeah. um that these kids can come back and listen to oh yeah he's right maybe i just set me a goal to where I want this, how far to take me. And then from there, I'll venture out to, yeah. um, like, you know, not just surviving, but living, eh? And yeah, enjoying like, it. so it's like when you, after you get that survival, right? It's like, all right, so if you travel and get out survival, then what happens when you get out, when you get to that survival, you gotta, you know, yeah. you gotta fix it, you know, because you gotta, you know, I'm, I come from the city. Um, uh, I came like near my school, there is a dollar pizza um and it doesn't even matter which part of the city you go to like i uh like people was um just selling crack outside the dollar pizza store all the time like people my age just selling crack there's these pellets smiley faces on them um it's like a normal it's 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 like a it's 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 like a it's a crack rock but with fentanyl in it so it's a it's because fentanyl is a big um it that's one of the biggest crises in uh the the, the entirety US of right the states now. right yeah. now yeah i have seen uh this Fent. is it the skid row yeah um, well that's all in santa monica la that's like it's it's bad um they have they administer narcan which is if you're overdosing you put it in your nose um and then you wake back up again and you're good um there's only so much narcan i think you can take um wow. also it's like um it's you know i there's a bunch of I, you know i bet there's as we talk there's so many people in skid row dying from fentanyl as we talk you know like right now there's probably an in an ambulance someone's administering narcan as we speak definitely That's multiple people so it's like um i feel like the the fentanyl crisis needs to be stopped because it's not only going into crack it's going into it's going into coke, opioids, all these things. And you grew up around people like this. Well, I like, you know, in the city, it's kind of inevitable. No matter where you go, you're always going to find, um, like, you're, you're always going to find people who either sell or not. Like, it's just inevitable. You know, I have, like, you know, may, like, as, as much as sometimes, you know, maybe I, like, I wasn't, where the you know home of the crackheads were and all this stuff i wasn't i wasn't in harlem chilling watching everybody sell crack like no I, it's just like you're it's everywhere you know it's 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 part of it's part of life um now the reason i'm asking is that how how was it easy for you to not want to be like that um, um, like what made you you grew up around all these things you can see it in your everyday life what made you not want to be a see, seeing a naked crackhead scream on the bus <laughs> well, but that's <laughs> enough that's enough for me <laughs> but you know um as a young kid yeah. growing up in that yeah. in that no like no but seriously like like just in general all right the effects of it like is. i've um i i see I, when I was when I was in high school, getting the dollar pizza, I saw all of them line up at outside the dollar mm. pizza. Not only was I mad because I couldn't get the pizza, <laughs> because crackheads don't move when you ask them to. But and I love all of y'all, by the way. If you know, even if you're high listening to this, if you know, but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, but it's one of these things where it's like, I just every, everything about it like um when it comes to the when it comes to the uh lust for it when it comes to the uh it like it i've seen also fentanyl it destroys legs arms you see flesh and bone if they use a lot of fentanyl mm. because it's so it's such a hard drug you will see flesh and bone and yeah. seeing that especially on i remember on the subway it's like you like i saw this guy's entire leg bloody you could see his bone 
tissue, literal tissue on his leg. And it's like, so, um, also I don't want to die, but you know, like I, it's just, yeah, you know, it's, 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 it's sad. It's sad when you see it. Um, mm. um, it's also the cheapest drug around, um, which is why it is it's perfect. Easy, easily perfect. accessible. Though. Yeah. It, I literally like, um, like you, you go and help people in like different places. Like, let's say you want to help in Skid Row or something like that. Like there's always going to be homies that are coming up to you trying to sell, you know, I, there is, I like, I saw this Twitter uh, video of this guy who used to be a social worker who became a crackhead off of just someone selling, you know, wow. it's good because, um, so it's not easy to just, um, to well, just once say you, no. Once you get that first high yeah, and then you wake up and they administer Narcan on you, you hate everything else. You hate that. You hate because there is no, there's going to be nothing that gives you that greater feeling. So, and if that feeling costs 20 cents and that feeling makes you unable to care about how you look outside and blah, blah, blah. Like, the, like these are just regular people. You know what I mean? At, at one time, this was someone's, this was, this was someone's son or this was someone's daughter. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, right, this thing made them feel better than they were feeling at that time. And then they got, and then when they got high and then Narcan administered and boom, killed my high, I want to just get high again because I hate life. That's how it is, you know? So, and it's like, wait, I can pay 20 cents for this? I can pay 30 cents for this? I can pay, I can go to a, you know, dollar pizza? You know what I mean? Yeah. That's the whole wow. thing behind it. So but, that's yeah. what home looks like for you, eh? I mean, it's just harm for just, I, for all the people who are in those situations right now, it's, it's you know, feel for them all, but yeah. Well, isn't it awesome that you have, um, you know, came out of there? Yeah. You have explored I, the world? Hey, I'm not, yeah. I, to Japan? Every day I thank God I'm not a crackhead. Um, <laughs> uh, but every, no, but like, I mean, you should though. You should be grateful that uh, you ain't on fentanyl because, you know, every I day I'm like, may. you know, so that's why it's just like, oh, at least I'm not on fentanyl today. Let's go. You know, <laughs> it's, it's one of those things where it's like, oh, at least I'm not you know like you know yeah I yeah mean. we have similar similar people here not um you know uh we have a lot of homelessness mm -hmm. but our pop population compared to your population you know we're cut in half so it's not so big as your guys but it's still a problem here for us as well here in new zealand um do you ever invite a homeless person on a podcast we invite them for a shower i don't think that they want to <laughs> Be in front of the camera well, we invite can... them for food and um showers but i think i mean yeah it's something that we do want to get into um, should. Should. yeah i think that that's a mean um we are wanting to do podcasts like that mm -hmm. and just get the raw story of the real people yeah because mm -hmm. it's it's no good if somebody who doesn't know the lifestyle or doesn't know anything's up here talking about it yeah. eh? yeah. so um yeah, what an awesome... So how long are you here in New Zealand and what's your plans while you're here? Um, a month and so good question. I have the same question as well. Um, I don't... <laughs> I, uh, I'm going to be traveling around um, different spots. Once <laughs> I'll get to you on the spots later. Um, but so far what I've seen, I love Auckland. I like, like it is great love New Zealand um, and yeah you know yeah our country is very beautiful mm -hmm. um, beautiful people mm -hmm. beautiful Maoris which are the indigenous you know mm -hmm. that yeah yeah I mean I, yeah I was learning about all that stuff before but yeah I mean did that's you, really cool that's, that's a question actually I would like to ask yeah. did you know that prior coming to New Zealand um, so I learned like i know that that there is definitely that like uh culture um i didn't really like i learned i learned kyoto on the um on the plane so i didn't know like all the uh i didn't know all the slang and stuff like that before i went in but i knew about the culture um 
you know, I, I knew about the culture, the look, the style, all this stuff before. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, excited. Cool. So we'll have to take you to meet some Maldives. Um, well, we're Maldi, not yeah. meet some Maldives, but eat some Maldi food, take you maybe to a marae and um, get your hangi, um, uh, teach you yeah, a haka. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I, th I think that this is something that, because um, that's our culture, eh? We um, usually would... LMP. LMP, that's a drink. Um, <laughs> yeah. Just like these fellas, you know. Yeah. <laughs> they, um, yeah, that's a drink. Oh, we will, it's kawakawa tea. <laughs> kawakawa tea is a plant that we pull off the outside the whenua. Mm -hmm. And you just put that in a bit of hot water. He doesn't mess with that. Kawakawa tea. That's why the belly's so big. <laughs> <laughs> but um kawa kawa tea has a lot of good things for you yeah. but um what i'm what i'm saying is that we want you to try the the rawest and um rarest ingredients that we have here in new zealand that's so cool that's so cool i've uh you said something about haka right yeah, yeah. i saw this uh i saw this cool uh thing before a football match and they did it yeah it so awesome. haka is um don't quote me on this because every Māori's always got their own um, version to what. So this is what I've seen growing up. A haka is like a term of respect or a, a battle cry. Um, so I think when they were in war, um, once they win the war, they would haka to celebrate. Um, or when they were going into war, they would haka to scare, mm. to scare the opponents. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, so um, now we use it for thanks. So... Um, uh, kids gets up, sings a song. Mm -hmm. Some people would come up and do a haka for them. <laughs> uh, mainly males. Yeah. In some parts of New Zealand, only males are prone or allowed to do haka. Um, mm -hmm. In certain towns, um, certain towns, mm -hmm. women are allowed. Sometimes women are not allowed. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so that's our way of giving thanks, um, expressing our emotion. So after a funeral, we would um, perform a haka to let all the emotion out. Mm. and show that as much love that we um, give for that person that's passed that's or graduated yeah. yeah and for the sports i believe it's just um culture appreciation mm. and to scare the opponents as well yeah. <laughs> no i mean it looks so cool you know but uh, yeah you um it's you can learn a chance yeah yeah yeah, yeah I, you know I, I wouldn't look that cool doing it but it you know because everyone seemed way more buff and built than me uh, yeah. but you know I don't think it's not about how how you look it's yeah, about how yeah, you're my, feeling yeah my battle cry would be like a wine like a battle yeah. wine it's how you're yeah, feeling yeah, at yeah. the time um <laughs> to get your stuff out that's yeah. usually how a lady would yeah <laughs> <laughs> is it it's a it's like a it's like a um wait no it's, sorry keep going wait, wait what did you say before before they rudely interrupted <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's the haka and the pukana. The uh -huh. pukana is the end where you just like um, yeah, open your eyes, open your tongue, and like kind of scare them a bit. Yeah, yeah. So that that's mainly for the males. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I, I... Females will do it, but they just widen their eyes, mm -hmm. and the males would widen their um, bring their tongues out, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, and do all these types of movements yeah no that's so that's so awesome yeah yeah so um a haka could mean anything it could mean that we're angry at you or it could mean that we love you mm -hmm. um yeah. something like yeah that. I, you know i'm still learning myself so we'll learn together yeah please I, I think my haka might be a um a crime against humanity but you know it, it <laughs> would be it would you know it would be like i think for maori we we um enjoy other cultures enjoying our culture because i think for i love us, it i love it we're like, <laughs> we're like the least forgotten about culture mm -hmm. around the world well i'm sure there's more but um for us we feel like oh, everyone always well, forgets about us you know speak on that i mean i have a question what do you think about the representation in movies or entertainment media well, I think it's all—it's all true. Like that's—that's that's how some families are being brought up, and mm -hmm. some still live in that um, to today. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think it's all true. Um, sometimes, the way they say it, they could say it a bit better, but as long as the message is there, I suppose. Eh? Mm -hmm. And at least we're out there, yeah. and people are knowing what we're going through here was in our there, little corner of the world. Was there a big movie or show or? something that kind of once for warriors have you seen that no 
we'll watch it after this. Um, okay. That's a very, um, what would you call that kind of show? It's, um, it's very confronting to some. It's um, how our parents and mm. even, yeah, like I was saying, some of us now are still being raised in alcohol, drug addictions, um, parties. We just had parties at the houses. It's a normal, mm -hmm. it's a normal thing. Um, yeah. It was a normal thing uh -huh. um, for Maori. So yeah. I think it all started when the, you know, we lost our culture mm. for a bit there. Mm -hmm. So I think it all started from then. We just forgot who we were, started we got introduced to alcohol mm -hmm. and we like the taste of it so, mm. and i think that's where some of our families are still being affected especially by alcohol mm -hmm. and drugs yeah thank god there's not fentanyl here yet but i mean the effect of drugs and addiction is all the same eh? yeah yeah hey, but they they move it like crazy yeah and it is it is getting bad but i think when we have spaces like this where we can come and hide away and bring our kids to um this is what makes it a bit more easier to live in yeah. a place like this yeah yeah no nah, i mean look i mean we have all the same issues mm. you know with multiple demographics you know not just people that look like me but like you know just in general in the states you know you have and it, you know sometimes you have people who come from the most successful places right who come who have everything and they and they lose it all mm -hmm. just because of stuff like that you know i've like uh i was i so i interned at this uh soup kitchen i worked with this guy um and uh he used to run the biggest club in new york city at the time in the 90s he used to make so much money uh and then he lost it all um because he was addicted to cocaine but um you know, like I said, th those are the types of situations sometimes, even in just those just things. Yeah, they can like it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Like you can have all the success, but one time, one time it's a little bit stress where you like, especially, you know, the United States. I don't know if y'all have an opioid epidemic or anything like that. Not that I know of. Okay. No. Like oxycodone, Percocet, Molly, no. So that's a huge thing. And that's where they lace the um, fentanyl. That's where they put the fentanyl in. Percocet. And, and so what happened, though, is that these are, our, these are all pharmaceuticals, right? These are all things that are given to people. Like ADHD, they're going to probably prescribe you um, Adderall. Now, Adderall is methamphetamine. It's just meth. But... Mm. Um, like they it was this idea that it was not addicting at first it's this wonder drug all these things and i have seen so many people like lose it all i've like oh my god and because they administer it to adhd kids all the hd all the adhd kids who do get it um sell a bunch of it because mm -hmm. you know if you like they get prescribed it they you know, so that kind of puts them into automatically a spot, mm. you know. Um, and it's crazy because sometimes the kids with the prescriptions are the only ones that can give you non-fake ones. And so that's the, and so that's, that's the whole um, wow. thing about it. You know, we, the opioid crisis is huge. Uh, like so everything. some kids are just born into it. Some hey. kids are born into it, but it's funny because it's like, it's the, it's the kids it's the rich kids who are prescribed it who are like oh i get vivance oh i get adderall oh i get xanax oh blah 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 and then they can just because they're prescribed it they just sell a bunch of it and all this stuff yeah and yeah wow yeah. and what are the ages of these children that are doing things like this? i mean it can between... range it can range yo they've been they die like it depends they diagnose people with meds like really early like you say seven like... eight years old even more wow. um not all kids sell like all like a bunch of kids just use it you know because no seriously it is a medication it does help in a lot of cases for stuff like that and i always and i and i always recommend people seeing a psychiatrist and and uh and um you know learning about medication learning because it is a medication it actually is important it's just you know there there it's like i said it's the fault of the system 
itself in a lot of cases, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, we believe that here yeah, strongly as well, eh? It is the fault of the system, and it's unfortunate that we can't change that system, but be yeah. here to help support the ones stuck in it. Um, so we'll wrap this up, and we'll catch up with you before you leave. We're okay. hoping to do a follow-up interview to no see problem. how, if we even taught you the haka, or if we even gave you a hangi, <laughs> and how your experience was if we burnt the breed or not. Yeah. Um, so before we go, um, you can, uh, if you would like to, you can just say some things that you want to experience while you're here in New Zealand, okay. and then we'll follow up later to see if we did get those covered for you. Okay. If that's something. Okay, so it's the manifestation thing. All right. You know uh, it. It's your time. All right. Um, oh my God, I don't know what's. Okay, <laughs> so guys, um, in New Zealand, shout out all my. And he almost just fell off the chair. I was about to burst out laughing. Um, a shout out to all my New Zealand heads. Um, I really want to. I really want to eat the pie. I really want to. Uh, I want to learn haka. Um, I also uh, just want to be here um, and just like enjoy the the environment, the nature, the the life, the you know it, um, checklist um, for the next time. Um, if there's any black barbers in New Zealand, please, y'all. I need I need I need to I need a dreads or something. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. Literally, um, and uh, if there's, uh, um, yeah, um, you know, uh, I am Gabriel Nieves Gun. I'm going to be an up and coming uh, uh, personality, hopefully. I don't know, whatever, just whatever pays the bills. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I'll take it. It's been so fun being here. I love being in Otara. This is the spot. This I'm, we in the hood, like we actually, in the, you know, we in the hood right now, like we chilling. But uh, yo, it's lit, like you know. I shout out all my hoods across New Zealand, across every country, man. Like seriously, I I um, it's great being here. But yeah, it was nice having you. Thank you so Gabe, much. I'm looking Thank forward you. to.